Hello everyone, Scott Ashley here with Alabama Bass Nation. This uh, video will be going over the third stop of the Tide Division for this season at Logan Martin at the new facility of Lincoln Landing. Um, I think I have the address in here in the slideshow as well. Um, this is our third tournament, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna skip over some of the uh, normal stuff briefly and um, kind of highlight the key points that are gonna be different for this tournament. So, there we go. Um, we still have a little bit of the COVID-19 stuff going around. It is getting better, but um, please um, refer to this slide. And if you're sick or feeling any of these symptoms, please uh, do not attend. Let us know and we'll work with you any way we can to uh, you know, make sure we keep everybody safe. Pictures, this slide, slide is different. Chris has a new number. So if you have uh, that's this number to text pictures to saved in your phone or the old number, please replace it with this number if you're texting pictures to him. And of course, the email is still the same. Um, encourage you to send any photos or short videos in that you want to. Chris will get those posted for you. I know last weekend at the junior tournament, Chris got a lot of pictures. You guys saw a lot on Facebook, so he does a great job of getting those up. Uh, just remember, if you have that number stored in your phone, check it and make sure you have this updated number. All right. So into the meat of it, remember our check-in rule, you guys have been doing a really good job of that, but uh, just in case there's anybody new, um, have a new boat captain or what have you, please make sure everyone is aware you must check in with our check-in person at the end of the day. We'll cover that several times um, tonight. We need one, at least one member of each boat to watch this video and or review the slideshow online so that at least one person in the boat knows all the procedures. There's quite a few things different in this one, so please make sure that, preferably all of you, but at least one member of each boat knows and understands all the specific procedures for this tournament. Um, speaking of which, um, one that's a little bit new is official practice ends at 4.30 on Friday, March the 4th, okay? So that's with official practice ending at the end of registration, all competitors must be off the water by the end of registration or at 4.30. This has not been an issue so far because of um, daylight savings time, but it's staying daylight longer. And uh, probably after this will probably be the last tournament where we have daylight savings time. <clears throat> so make sure to get that communicated to everyone on your team so that we don't have any issues with that as we move into the uh, longer days. Another special one for this one is the launch site at Lincoln Landing does have a $5 boat ramp usage fee. <clears throat> it's a brand new facility. There's still, still a lot of construction going on, but it's already very nice and it will be a great, great facility once it's completed. And um, you know, they have to, to be able to, to, to pay for that. So there is a $5 boat ramp usage fee. And at this boat ramp, that $5 fee is collected by an automated kiosk, as they call them, machine that you can insert cash or credit card into. This will be a huge roadblock for us in the morning trying to launch over 200 boats. So I have permission from Lincoln Landon, and actually they prefer for me, for us, Alabama Bass Nation, to collect that boat ramp usage fee at registration. So we are going to require the boat ramp, boat ramp usage fee be paid at registration when you pick up your boat flags. So let me say that one more time. You will be required to purchase your boat ramp usage fee when you pick up your registration card and your boat flag. So please come prepared to pay that $5 boat ramp usage fee. If one person, the coach, or someone is picking up the boat ramp boat flags and registration cards for the entire team, absolutely great. That helps everybody out, but they need to be prepared to pay the boat ramp fee for each boat flag they pick up, okay? 
I know I stress that, but that one's very important. And it's for your sake so that you can get in the water Saturday morning on time and blast off in your order because I will not wait on everybody to get launched. When it gets safe daylight, the ones that are in the water are gonna go. All right, <clears throat> registration. We'll have the Bass Nation trailer set up there at Lincoln Landing. You will see it when you drive in. Registration will be Friday, March the 4th between 3.30 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. at the trailer, as we normally do. Um, if for some reason you're not able to check in on Friday, please let us know. Call me, send us an email, text us or something. Let us know so that we can pull your boat flags and registration and have them ready to pick up, <clears throat> excuse me, Saturday morning between 5 and 5.30 a.m. As always, please make sure you Check your boat flag against your boat number on your registration card before you leave the parking lot. If, if you're a coach and you pick up all of them, go through them and check them so that we, in case anybody's made any errors <clears throat> and we can correct there on the spot. Normal role that we've had, just a reminder, maximum horsepower is 250 horsepower. This includes a, during official practice. Each boat must have a boat captain and two anglers. If for some reason there's only one angler present, one is out for some reason, then the boat must have an observer for a total of three people. I believe, I'll get to this in a minute, but I believe we're around 210 boats registered for this tournament. And there's 225 boat trailer parking spots at Lincoln Landing. So parking should not be an issue. You'll see a map of that in a few minutes. <clears throat> it is a rather large parking lot. <clears throat> So um, I believe the city of Lincoln is providing some golf carts to shuttle people back and forth from the um, parking to the boat ramp. So that'll be provided for you. Blast off will be on the small floating tee dock on the downriver side from the boat ramp. There's a map here in a minute that will show you that <clears throat> where that'll be at. Boat flag must be secured to your boat and visible sight of to staff and other competitors. Blast off, I just changed this a few minutes ago because this last weekend with the juniors, I believe we blasted off at 610 and was probably a few minutes late, later than I'll be with you guys. So I'm thinking we're probably gonna be close to 6 a.m. blasting off, of course, depending on the weather and cloud cover, fog or anything like that. Life jackets must be worn when combustion engines running. This includes you, boat captain. Boat captains, please maintain safe boating at all times. We'll be putting in in the river and, and a lot of river <coughs> area that you'll be running. So uh, could get into some tight situations. Please be safe. It's not worth it, right? Slow down and um, keep safe distance. First flight, we'll check in at 2 p.m. Um, flights will be 10 minute increments, um, most likely somewhere around 10 to 12 boats per flight, depending on where the numbers fall out. No wake is just any areas marked as no wake. Um, I will say, and I'll go back and add into this slideshow here, the I-20 bridge for those that are running downriver is a no wake and that is a, <clears throat> a uh, point where Marine Patrol like to set and uh, something easy to miss. So make sure that you uh, sit down and idle under that I-20 bridge. I believe it is, it used to be, I believe it's still off, uh, no wake. Off limits will be the point beside the boat ramp on the upriver side down to the last dock. And there's a map to show this um, out about 50 yards into the river away from the docks. <clears throat> That's simply so that we don't have someone up there trying to fish while all the, where all the boats are coming in and, and crowding things. Size limit for Logan Martin is 12 inches. Across the board, largemouth and spotted bass. I don't think you'll see a smallmouth in, uh, in Logan Martin. Fish will be measured with mouth closed and tail fan to attempt to measure. We'll try every way we can to attempt to measure. Um, we did have quite a few short fish last time, so make sure that you check those. We have a consistent bump man who's very good and is very consistent, right? 
So don't come thinking you're going to slip one through and be upset about your penalty. It is, if you bring in a short fish, you lose that fish and you get a one pound penalty. So make sure your fish measure. It is a five fish limit per boat. So fishing must stop when the sixth fish enters the boat until you call back down to the fifth fish. So to clarify that, when you're fishing and you already have a limit, catch number six, he goes in the boat. Everybody has to stop fishing until you look at your fish and throw the smallest one back and go back down to where you only have five fish in the boat. And then you can resume to fish, resume fishing. Oops. Check in will be the same small floating T dock beside the boat ramp that we blast off from. Guys, you should know this by now. You must check in before you go to weigh in. That's what stops the clock. If you got, and this is, is a trailered weigh in that you'll see in a minute. So if you, you're due in at two o'clock and you come in at 158 and you load your boat and get a bag by the time you get to the scales, it's going to be 215 or later. And you're going to be disqualified because after 15 minutes, you're disqualified. It's a pound a minute up to 15 minutes. So make sure you stop at that check-in dock and check in. You must check in even if you have no fish. You can turn in your boat flag with the check-in person if you don't have any fish. Just happy to have that. If for some reason you have to leave early or you break down and cannot make it back to the boat ramp, you must call myself, Jeffrey, or Daryl and let us know so we can check you out of the tournament. Remember our check-in rule, right? I don't want to have to disqualify anyone, much less the entire school. It's a matter of safety. I'm not worried about that boat flag. I'm worried about your safety. So please, please make sure that we know you're all for our safety. As stated already, this will be a trailered weigh-in only, okay? You'll see why in a minute when you see the map and anybody who's already been there practicing will understand. With the water being down as far as it is, there's only three floating dock, three small floating docks that go up, protrude out into the water that you can pull up to, to get in and out of the boat. Um, so there is nowhere near enough room to do a water weigh in. So please make sure that you trailer your boat before you come to weigh in. When I get to the map, I'll go over a suggested procedure. As always, you must use our Bass Nation bags and you must bring your boat flag to the bump station with your fish to weigh in. Okay, You do not have to have your boat flag to get a bag, but you have to have your boat flag with you to weigh in. Anglers, please make sure you've been doing a good job of this, but please make sure you tell the weighmaster at the scales when you want, if you want to weigh a big fish. So when you hand him your fish, say, I want to weigh a big fish, okay? If I'm on the stage, he, he lets me know, I'll repeat it so that the person on the computer in the office knows and we get you handled. The weigh-in will be there at Lincoln Landing and you'll see some slides of that in a minute. <clears throat> As always, we'll make the fish available at the back of the trailer for pictures for any, um, anyone who wants more pictures with their fish. You can see the Remind app there. It's the same one we've had all year. But if you don't have that, please uh, subscribe to it. So we send out a lot of updates through there. I believe Daryl even puts this slideshow out on the Remind app. And then you have uh, the emergency numbers from myself, Jeffrey, and Daryl. All right. I am not going to go through blast off procedure. You guys can read that. I think everybody knows and understands the drill with that now. Just um, read through that and make sure you're, you're familiar with it. Um, I'm not gonna read through the boat captain do's and don'ts. Hopefully our boat captains know by now in high school, you're essentially there to drive the boat to where the kids tell you to take the boat, okay? You're not trying to trolling motor and that fish and absolutely do not handle a rod and reel. All right, once you check in, I'm not gonna go through this line by line. Just know that it's a trailered way in. So this is a little different from um, the last one at Scottsboro at Goose Pond because that one was a water way in. But it's essentially the same process other than trailering your boat first rather than um, tying up to the dock. All right, 
Now to the meat of it a little bit. Here's a aerial shot of Lincoln landing. There's several different shots in there here and there in different stages. But you'll see there's a, a long road coming, a long drive coming into the facilities out uh, off of the road. Once you get down to where that blue block is that says bathhouse, and you see the little orange triangle there that says ramp through, that is where that kiosk is at. So now for you to, so you understand this is why we're collecting them at registration. If everybody tries to get their boat ramp fee right there, that's a pinch point and it's up close to the boat ramp. We've got 10 lanes of boat ramp down there and there's no way that people are gonna move fast enough paying their boat ramp fee to keep 10 lanes <clears throat> of boat ramp fed. So again, we are gonna collect the boat ramp usage fee at registration. So please come prepared to pay that $5 there. Um, for the few who have to come in on Saturday morning to check in and register, they will just have to use that, that kiosk to pay their boat ramp usage fee, but that should be only half a dozen or so. Once you reach um, that point there where the uh, that bathhouse is and the boat ramp kiosk, we're going to split it out into two lanes. So there's enough room on that drive to be two lanes. So we're gonna run two lanes from there down to try to keep the uh, boat ramp fed. Again, it's 10 lanes. Um, as you come out, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Of where to go to park. Um, the back parking lot, you do have to go back out on the main road to go around to the back parking lot. But it's pretty self-explanatory. And I believe I've already said for those who end up going to the back parking lot, we will have, there will be golf carts there to shuttle you back down to the boat ramp. All right, <clears throat> for blast off, we're going to blast off up river, toward up river. You're gonna stage down river from the boat ramp and that way you're pointed into the current if there is any this time of the year. There very well could be, I know there was current there this weekend um, because of all the rains and it's likely there still could be current. It makes it much easier for everybody to control the boat if you're pointed into the current. Pretty self-explanatory here. We're gonna blast off from that, that T-Dock, the floating T-Dock furthest downriver or the second one from the boat ramp is where I plan to set up for you to idle by. <clears throat> That way we leave the other two tea docks open for any last minute people who are putting in and we don't have to hold people up or shut down the boat ramp. The only thing, a couple of things here are staging, please stage to the left or down river. That river goes forever, so there's plenty, plenty of room. No need to get up there and crowd the dock. The less you crowd the dock, the smoother and faster it goes. The other main point here is once you idle by us at, on the floating tea dock and we have checked you out into the tournament, this is a small floating tea dock, okay? And we're gonna have people on this. It's a little bit dangerous there. So I ask boat captains that you please idle way on out there away from us before you take off. Um, I actually asked if you turn and go downriver to idle past all the boats staging before you take off. Because if you were sitting back there in a crowd of boats, you wouldn't want to be rock, rocked around from somebody taking off and throwing wake across there and playing bumper boats with everybody else. I'm not gonna make it a rule of a no wake zone there because I have no way of enforcing it. But I ask that you please be sensitive to that and think about it in terms of you were setting up there. So again, if you're going upriver, please idle out a way, good piece away from the dock before you take off. If you're going downriver, please idle past everybody that's left out there staging before you take off and get on plane. All right, next. All right. <clears throat> This slide shows the off limits, which will be from the point of the upriver side of the boat ramp down to that um, 
first stationary dock, okay? And they out approximately 50 yards. So just don't be fishing right up there in front of everything where everybody's gonna be trying to come in, okay? We'll check in there on that same floating dock that we blasted off from. One more time, you must check in before you go to weigh in. You must check in even if you have no fish, okay? If you have to leave early for some reason or you break down and cannot make it in, you must call myself, Jeffrey, or Daryl and let us know. Now, one thing here is just my recommendation, okay, because this is a trailered weigh-in. If I was a boat captain in this, I would pull up to this floating dock at check-in, check in with the check-in person, and let me back up. As I come off a plane into the area, I would have one of my anglers start getting ready to get out. And then I would idle up to this floating tee dock, have that angler jump out, check in with the check-in person, and then that angler who gets out can come up to the trailer and go ahead and get a bag or wait in line to get a bag. Boat captain and other angler can proceed down to one of the other docks, let the boat captain out or the other angler to go get the truck, proceed to load the boat. Hopefully by then your angler would have a bag and can meet you at the boat ramp or on the way to the parking lot. You can get your fish out and come back, okay? Other suggestion is if you, you know, if you need both all of them in the boat to be able to get it out because of circumstances, check in, and then once you load the boat to go out, drop one angler off at, at the little drive going out to the pavilion where the trailer will be to go get a bag, and then come meet you at the park lot. Those are just suggestions to make it easier for you, okay? But that would work out pretty well. All right, what we got here? All right, it is a trailer weigh-in, okay? And there's, uh, okay, I got ahead of myself. So there's my suggestion on the screen here about uh, dropping an angler off at check-in. You can see on the screen how we plan to have everything set up. Uh, we do have a fish care trailer for this one that'll be behind the trailer. Um, you'll come in from this um, long concrete drive up to the trailer or up to the tanks, weigh in, go behind the trailer to take pictures with your fish, drop them off at fish care, and then you can proceed you know, out to the spectator area or back to your truck or whatever you would like to do. I will say that this area is, this landing facility is all still under construction, and most of it is kind of like you see in the picture, a lot of just dirt and it's rained a lot so it's muddy so you're going to want to stay on the concrete walkways and driveways that they have for the most part there is an area sodded between where the trailer will be and the pavilion which we'll talk to in a minute all right this part is really very important too it's kind of unusual but for spectators it's important for this so Please tell your spectators that are coming to watch you to get on Facebook and look at the slideshow or at least go over it with them. Okay. First of all, spectator parking. We have 210 boats registered in this tournament and there's 225 boat trailer parking places, right? If 75 cars show up for weigh-in, then we're going to have a problem in the parking lot with being able to park boat trailers when you take your boat out and come out, somebody's got your parking space. <clears throat> there is a sign um, on the side of the driveway coming in over down here by the this first bathhouse down by the boat ramp where you see the bubble that says spectator parking. It is a grass area, but it's a high area. The Alabama Bass Show was there this past weekend and their spectators parked out there with no issues. So that is the spectator parking area. It is a big area, should more than hold all the spectators, but if not, you see out on the road before you turn in to Lincoln Land and just past it, there's another parking lot over there for spectator parking. And I'm told we will have golf carts um, running during weigh-in as well to transport spectators. 
Also, for your spectators, this one's important too. Maybe save some people some trouble. I know most all teams have big, nice tents that they do tailgating with, which we appreciate and love. Okay. But here at this facility, Lincoln Landon has a huge covered pavilion that is right in front of the trailer. Okay. So there really is no need for the tents because you're going to be under a covered area. Um, so hopefully save some people some trouble of dragging a tent. There is a small um, grassy area between the stage and the pavilion. And there's some bleachers there for setting. And the Lincoln Landon actually asked me when I was there this weekend, please don't put tents out there. It's brand new, fresh sod, right? They're trying to get growing. So please help them out with that. So no tents, we can't, we won't allow any tents in the grass. So if you bring a tent and you just want to set it up for advertisement, it'll have to go on the concrete under the pavilion, but there really is no need for it. All right, in that grassy area I'm talking about, you can see on the screen there, I've got a little yellow arrow pointed to it. Okay, so let me look at my other notes here real quick. <clears throat> So remember the dead fish penalty, still cooler water, so we shouldn't have a lot of trouble with that as long as you take care of your fish. It is an escalating penalty. It goes from 0.25 to 0.75 to 1.25, et cetera. Um, we will have the scales open by 1.30. Probably we'll have them open before. If you have something happen and have to leave, give me a call and, and I'll let you know if we're ready or not. As stated, we have a roughly 210 boats registered for this tournament. <clears throat> Some major points for this tournament, right? Key points for this tournament, just to remember. So um, the boat ramp usage fee, right? We will be collecting that $5 boat ramp usage fee at registration when you pick up your boat flag and registration card. Remember, it is a trailered way in, trailer only. There's not enough dock space to tie up to and go way in. You must trailer your boat and then come to way in. Spectators must park in the designated area. And remember, there's no need for the tents. The spectator area is a large covered pavilion and um, we can't allow any um, tents on the grass. And one more time, everyone, remember to check in at the dock with our check-in person, even if you have no fish. Um, and let's see. Yes, I believe that is what I have for today for this uh, meeting. Appreciate everyone joining. Um, as always, if you have any issues, right, if it's emergency, call 911 first. Um, after that, call myself, Jeffrey or Daryl, and we'll do anything we can to help you. With that, I will say good luck to the Tide Anglers, and we look forward to seeing you this weekend at Logan Martin at Lincoln Landon. Thank you.